Hey everybody, it is Dak here from the Ed Boys, and welcome to my OSRS Demonic Gorillas Guide. Gorillas are one of the best PVM moneymakers in the game, especially for not even technically being a boss fight. They are high effort, though not very difficult overall, and it's pretty realistic that something that makes a lot of money might take some effort, to be fair. In this guide, as always, I will start with the requirements and recommendations for fighting gorillas, then I'll go over what gear you can wear and what you should bring in your inventory. Afterwards, we'll talk about the basic mechanics for gorillas and what you should expect to see when fighting them. That'll just be an overview of their mechanics. Afterward, I'll show a typical trip, which will include actually traveling there, and then the full fight, including whatever tips and tricks I have for killing gorillas. Finally, we'll talk about the best part, which is the loot. Let's talk about the requirements and recommended stats for gorillas. First of all, you have to do Monkey Madness 2 to unlock these bad boys. Monkey Madness 2 is a master level quest and is pretty lengthy, but gorillas are some of the best money in the game, so it would be pretty stupid if there wasn't at least one high requirement. You need to use two different attack styles to fight gorillas. Technically, it could be any of the three styles out there, but range and melee are your best options, no doubt. I suggest 80 plus range and 80 plus in your melee stats to fight demonics. It's very possible to kill them with lower levels, but at the same time, it's much smarter to go with even higher stats. When it comes to any PVM grind, one of the easiest ways to kill something faster and in turn make more money is to just have higher stats. So you might want to get higher stats if you're looking for faster kills. It wouldn't hurt to have 94 magic and the Lunar Spellbook to use Vengeance, but it's definitely not needed. You will need Protection Prayers to fight Gorillas, so 43 Prayer is a must. Offensive Prayers are very important for fast kills though, so having 70 Prayer and Piety unlocked is recommended, and 74 Prayer with Rigor is nice for range, but Eagle Eye can still be very helpful. Helpful. The rest of the recommendations are gear related, so I'll go over this in the next section, but it is worth mentioning that just having a blowpipe and an arc light are super helpful and very suggested for at least basic gorilla gear. In this gear section, I'm going to go over each slot and what piece of gear is best for range and melee. Not each armor slot requires a switch. In fact, you're going to switch gear fairly often, so it's a good idea to only bring a couple of pieces to switch, especially if you're new to this. For this reason, I'll be showing the visual for melee gear, and then I'll discuss what else to bring with you for range. I usually bring my best melee setup and then just a few pieces for a decent range switch. For the helmet slot, your best option is a Slayer Helm as long as you're on task. Gorillas count as black demons and monkeys, so anytime you're on one of those tasks, you could fight gorillas for some solid cash. The new best in slot melee helm is the Natus Knot Face Guard. Being a new helm dropped from a monster that already got buffed, it's possible that this helm could see a slight nerf, but I'm only saying that because it's been mentioned. I don't necessarily have a ton of faith that it'll happen, and even if it does, it's still going to be a really good helm since it doesn't have a negative range bonus and it has a good prayer bonus. The Serpentine Helm isn't a bad option being one of the better melee helms in the game, and if you're using a blowpipe while you wear this helm, it's going to poison the gorillas when doing any damage, which slightly helps speed things up. If you have none of these, then you have a helm of Nate is not, and I'm not a huge fan of Void here, but if you're using Void, obviously you just have to bring the melee and the range helm. Other than Void range helm, I don't often bother with a helm switch. For your cape slot, an infernal cape is the best option, but if you're a nub like me, you could bring a fire cape. If you're an even bigger nub and you don't have that, a high level arty cloak can do the job. You also want to bring an Ava's device for you for ranging activities. The Ava's assembler is your best choice and the Ava's accumulator could do the job. If you don't have the infernal or fire cape to wear, it's not a bad idea just to bring this Ava's. Even if you do, the cape switch isn't super important. The necklace slot can be important for doing solid damage. Your best in slot melee necklace is an amulet of torture, and for range you have the necklace of anguish. Bringing these switches is highly recommended, though not everybody has them, especially if you're an Iron Man looking to get Zenite shards. Even if you just have one or the other, they have no benefits for the other attack style, so you're going to need a switch. The Amulet of Fury is the second best option in both melee and range slots, so if you have neither piece of Zenites, you could just bring the Fury, but if you have either a Torture or an Anguish, you could still bring a Fury to switch with them. If you don't have a Fury, the next best option is an Amulet of Glory. Your ammo slot's going to depend on your range weapon. If you brought a blowpipe, then you don't need ammo, and you could just wear a blessing for extra prayer bonus. The best one being the Rada's Blessing 4, achieved from the Core End Elite Diaries. Other than this, it depends on what your range weapon is, so we'll talk about that in the next section, which is weapons. In your weapon slot, you have a few options. The best melee weapon against any demon is the Arc Light. The Arc Light happens to be fairly easy to obtain uh, compared to other weapons, which is also pretty convenient. The arc light charges are not tradable though, so some players choose to save that for actual other bosses. The next best option here is a Grazi Rapier, followed by the Abyssal Tentacle for those who need a cheaper option. The Bludgeon is very popular here since it's only a little bit slower than the Tentacle, unless you're using an Avernic Defender of course, but it's also not a degradable weapon so it's not going to eat up your whips. As for ranged weapons, the Twisted Bow is the most powerful here, but it's clearly very expensive, so the Blowpipe's going to do a solid job for you. If you use a Blowpipe, I suggest Adam and Darts. After the Blowpipe, you have a Carol's Crossbow, then a Magic Shortbow is your best options. 
Don't forget, if you're using a T-Bow or Magic Short Bow, you want to bring arrows. I do suggest Amethyst arrows. And obviously, if you're using a Carol's Crossbow, make sure to bring Bolt Racks. Your shield slot might not be needed, for instance if you're bringing two-handed weapons, it doesn't really matter. But the best option for a melee offhand is the Avernic Defender, after that you have the Reliable Dragon Defender. And if you don't have a Dragon Defender, but you've done Monkey Madness 2, I'm not sure how to help you. Every ranged weapon I listed off is two-handed, so I can't imagine that you're going to be using a ranged shield. For the chest and legs, a bandos top and bottom is best for melee, and an armor top and bottom is best for range. If you don't have best in slot, then it's good to just throw down a range top and bottom. You have Bless Dehyde or carols if you don't have arma also if you don't really like the switches or at least you're new to it just wearing your best range gear and not bringing the melee switch is really not a bad idea it's not that important to have some extra strength bonus with bandos barrel's gloves are the best in slot for range and second best for melee you could bring ferocious gloves to switch if you're feeling special but it's really not necessary if you don't have barrel's gloves just start going down the list of recipe for disaster gloves or worst case scenario you could wear the combat bracelet if you've done monkey madness 2 and you don't have barrel's gloves though again what are you doing? Primordial boots are the best melee boots in the game, followed by dragon boots, which are a much cheaper alternative and are not too bad. I like to bring a ranging boot switch normally. Pegasian boots are the best option, followed by ranger boots, but ranger boots are not that much cheaper than Pegasians. Blessed Dehyde boots aren't a bad option overall. The boot switch is kind of nice because primordial boots and dragon boots really don't have any good effect on your ranging. Finally, we have the ring slot. A Berserker ring is your best option, and you should imbue it to double the stats. You could bring a Brimstone ring. It's not that bad since it gives strength and range, but your strength bonus is more valuable, so you kind of want to go with the imbued Berserker ring instead. A ring of suffering isn't terrible, especially if you're getting beat up a little while you're trying to learn them. I will discuss switches a little bit more at the beginning of the inventory section, but if you have any other questions about gear, let me know in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Some people like to bring Guthans as their melee gear to help with the trip length. This is not a bad idea when you're learning gorillas rather than grinding them out. You're going to get much faster kills with the arc light and once you're actually good at fighting gorillas, you shouldn't be taking that much damage. But Guthans can heal you up pretty well. Now for the inventory. First we've got whichever range switches that you decide to bring with you. Usually three or four max is a good idea, but as you get good with it, if you don't need that much food and you're used to switching quickly, you could bring more. You do have to switch pretty often, so switching a lot of items very often could be a pain in the neck. Your top priority switch is obviously your weapon, since it's the only way that you're going to do range damage. And then after that, you got to make sure you're bringing Ava's, or just don't have a fire cape from melee. Not using an Ava's device is a solid waste of money. The boots and amulet switches are both pretty important, but with the amulets, you could just bring a fury for both melee and range. So if you decide you only wanted three items, I would start with the boots, and then an amulet for your fourth item to switch. The least important switch is this Bandos top and bottom. It's common to just bring good range gear since you're getting to the point where you have a lot of switches, but if you're having really short trips, you want less switches too. It is very optional. It could speed up your kills per hour though, which does help with a little bit of money. I do have a Divine Super Combat and Divine Ranging Potion in here to speed up the kills. Faster kills does mean more money. They are fairly expensive and it doesn't make a huge difference to be fair. And also if you're like you're an Iron Man, you haven't unlocked it, they're really not that big of a deal. I bring 5 prayer potions, though the exact amount that you bring depends on how many kills you're getting, so if you're running out of food before prayer potions, you need to bring less of them, obviously. And then I've got a royal seed pot at the bottom of the inventory, and a rune pouch for vengeance. The rest of the slots are filled with sharks, and you could bring anglers to lengthen the trip, but really sharks should be fine, anglers are a little more expensive than they are necessary. Gorillas have some pretty interesting mechanics, it's a really good balance of requiring consistent intention and gear switches and prayer switches, but also none of it's necessarily very difficult. We're going to start with their protection prayers, which is really straightforward. They'll be using a random prayer when you start the fight, so obviously just make sure not to use that attack style. Once you've done enough damage with whichever attack you're using, it's going to switch the overhead prayer to whatever you're attacking with. It's normally every 50 damage that it switches overheads, but the first time a gorilla switches over, it tends to be a little earlier. Basically, when you're in the fight, you have to switch your gear over every 50 damage, though. This part's pretty easy to pay attention to, since you can always see which prayer that it's currently using right above its head. The gorilla also tends to beat its chest when it's switching over prayers, though it's usually easier just to notice the symbol over his head change. As for their attacks, they're a little sneakier since they don't always show you what they're attacking with over their head. For anybody who used the old plugin that's now removed, this might be the part that you're trying to learn. Gorillas can use all three attack styles. They have a range attack, which looks like they pick up a white rock and throw it at you. They have a melee attack where they swipe with their claws. And finally, a magic attack, which is a little green blob. Gorillas do like to do damage, and they'll only switch the normal attacks as long as they're not doing damage. So once they hit three zeros with any attack style, they're then going to switch attacks. 
you have to guess between the two remaining attacks, but they max out at a 30, so it's not a huge deal. And I'll discuss how to deal with that in the fighting section of the guide. They have one other attack that drops a big rock from the ceiling. All you have to do is run away from this rock. If you don't, you get hit for a third of your current health. This means that it can't kill you, though I'm not sure if at one health it hits a zero or not. I don't know if it's rounded up. You could get comboed out with another hit, though, so just run away when you see the rock. Dodging a rock does not count as a zero when it comes to the gorilla switching attack styles. It's fairly simple overall. Switch your gear whenever the gorilla switches overhead prayers, and switch your overhead prayer whenever they switch attacks. It can all happen fairly quickly when you're not used to it, so getting into the actual fight more in the next section might help you out. Let's start looking at a typical trip. I'm going to be doing this in my hardcore just in case I get lucky on a Zenite, so if you're wondering about any gear choices, it's because I've brought what I've got. You should use a royal seed pod that you got from the quest to teleport to the Grand Tree. There's also a bank right upstairs for in-between trips. If you've done the quest, then you've been in the caverns before, so you should have an idea of how to get there. Once you're in the caverns, you should turn on protect from mage or range. doesn't really matter until you're fighting one, and then you actually know what to pray. Take this passageway to the single combat area. You could fight multiple gorillas at once, or fight them with a friend if you want, but that can be a lot more complicated. Once you get in the room, you're going to be attacked by a gorilla before you can really choose one to fight. You want to pray against whatever attack that it used as soon as possible, or else it's probably going to do some consistent damage. Your main focus should be on not taking a ton of damage. Once you're protecting against their attack, check whatever the gorilla is praying to decide what you should be fighting with. Is it praying protect from range? Use melee. Is it praying protect from melee? Use range. Very simple. Now you've got two things to keep watching. The gorilla's attacks and the gorilla's prayers. Every time it switches overheads, you switch your gear and preferably your offensive prayer. And then if you're keeping track of the zeros that it hits while you protect from it, every three zeros you get ready to change your overhead. If you were just being attacked by either range or magic, then it's possible he's going to use melee on the next attack or whichever long range that he wasn't using. So for example, it just hit three zeros with range, you're now getting either melee or magic. If you step away from the gorilla and it wants to use melee, it has to follow you. So you can turn on protect from magic, take a few steps back, and if the gorilla follows you, quickly turn on protect from melee. You don't have to do this, you could just guess between the two, but getting this method down can save a lot of those random hits in the long run. If the gorilla just hit three melee zeros, then you're just guessing between magic and range, doesn't matter too much. Any time that you have to guess and you might take some damage is the best time to use vengeance. I don't bring vengeance with me very often, it doesn't add too much damage, and it really doesn't matter exactly when you use it, as long as you have vengeance cast whenever it hits you it'll do a little bit of damage back to the gorilla. Don't forget if you see a rock falling from the ceiling, you just gotta walk away one single square. It's pretty fast paced and it takes a little getting used to, but none of these specific mechanics are really difficult to do. You're just switching your gear and your prayers. A little bit of practice is gonna get you grinding gorillas in no time. Once you've run out of food or prayer potions, just use the royal seed pod to the grand tree and bank upstairs. I'm gonna go ahead and let this clip ride out for the rest of this kill for anybody who's looking to watch a few more examples, then we'll go ahead and get into the loot. Now let's get into everyone's favorite part, the actual loot from Gorillas. They have a pretty solid loot table even without their unique drops. There's lots of rune armor, some decent runes and whatnot that add up pretty well. Overall you're looking at 20 to 25k per drop without a unique is about average. You have a 1 in 100 chance to hit the unique drop table from Gorillas though, that's where you're going to make your cash. Specifically the Zenite Shard, which at the time of making this video is worth about 12 mil. There's a 1 in 3 chance of getting the Zenite Shard from this table, or in other words, every 300 kills you should expect to see one Zenite Shard. 12 mil every 300 kills would add 40k per kill, putting us at 60 to 65k per kill at Gorillas, all depending on your RNG of course. 
The other uniques on the table include a ballista spring, ballista limbs, light frame, heavy frame, and a monkey tail. None of these are super expensive, the most being the tail, which is only a few hundred K and very rare, so they don't really add that much profit in the long run. It's all about those Zenite shards when it comes to the unique table. When you first start killing gorillas, it might not be so fast, missing some gear switches or your offensive prayers, but once you get the process down, you can get up to 50 kills an hour. That's a pretty good hour though, so we're going to average from 40 to 50 kills an hour when looking at how much money we're making. This is also assuming you're on task, however many kills that you're getting per hour you can just plug that in at the end here to see how much money you should be expecting to make at this point we're now looking at anywhere from two and a half to three mil GP an hour in drops if you're landing on those Zenite shards you're not gonna get that much every hour obviously but even in regular drops you can add up to a mil or so which isn't too bad sometimes you're gonna get lucky and manage a couple of Zenites and only a few kills and you're gonna make a lot of money too so you never know you could make some pretty good bank here clearly this is not all profit you're probably spending around 500k an hour in supplies depending on if you're going for maybe higher level darts how many potions and whatnot you're using it could vary a little bit depending on stats and stuff but Usually two to two and a half mil profit an hour is very doable here. That's really all the main information I wanted to give you guys about gorillas. If you still have any questions or just other comments about how to fight gorillas, be sure to throw them in the comments section below. Other than that, everybody, I do hope you enjoyed or at least got some useful information. And if you did, be sure to drop a like and subscribe for more content. I also have a Twitch channel where I stream a lot of my content and a Twitter and a Discord, which all links are in the description. Thank you very much for watching, everybody, and best of luck with your gorilla grind.